Hello there guys, it's your Blue Count here, back again on a video and today I'm going to do what if Draco was adopted by Miracle, part 11, hope you enjoy it. So before we start this part, thank you for waiting guys, and if you are going to ask, I did my best, but I don't think my best is good enough, so there's still a chance I will pass, but it's a slim chance, so if I sound a bit down, that's why. Anyway, like always, a small recap is needed, but if you somehow missed last part, click an i button right here. And you guys already know drill, if you want another part of this series, 500 likes and I will make it. So last part we covered the event of the sport festival and it went almost like the anime with Doroki declaring war on Deku but this time Deku tell him quite bluntly that if he go against him using half his power he will beat him up. So after that the recovery battle happened with Deku getting first place and Jiro getting the fifth and in the recovery battle Deku team up with Jiro, Oraka and Tokuyami. They won by keeping their distance by using the combined power of Oraka and Deku's quirks. And then Bakugo launched himself toward Deku you know cursing at him, yelling at him, the usual. Deku had enough so he kicked him toward the ground. And Sir was not able to catch him so he was disqualified. And then we have the 1v1 battles with Deku going against Shinso. Shinso managed to use his quirk on him but by sheer force of will Deku break free from it. And he defeated Shinso. And because there is no Bakugo team in this what if, the wrestlers were a bit different. So Deku's next match was against Kaminari, which he was able to defeat him easily, but he did get zapped by full power Kaminari. Jiro on the other hand beat everyone, meaning she beat Oraka, Ida, but when she went against Todoroki, she lost. Then we have the fight between Todoroki and Deku, with Deku enraged because he just talked to Endeavor. So Deku tried in his own way to force Todoroki to use his quirk. And after he beat him a bit and talked to him, he convinced him to use his power. But something odd happened. Deku's watch started malfunctioning because of Kaminari's quirk. And because the watch was stuck playing Blood's Wave from the Moon for the past two weeks, Deku started to transform. But after he heard Jiro's voice, he was able to control himself and he unlocked a new form, the Rathfor form. And with this increase in power and speed, he easily wiped the floor with Doroki. But because he still knew to this power when he heard Bakugo's voice, he turned around and started charging the key blast to, well, to end him. But once again Jiro was able to calm him down and he passed out from exhaustion. And I think that's it for the summary so let's begin. So this part begins with Jiro still holding Deku or hugging him. Then she was interrupted by Mina. Jiro, wait until he wake up, then get her room. Jiro blush and tell her it's not like that. Mina just give her a look and tell her, really? This is the second time he calmed down after he went berserk and both of them are because of you. So come on, spit it out already, are you two dating or what? Jiro still blushing shook her head. No, we are not. Then they were interrupted by Ida telling them that we should take Deku to recovery girl. Which they did. But Mina still teases Jiro about Deku and asks her if they are not dating. Do you guys have feelings for each other? Because I think Izuku does. Jiro just looked down until I to get out. Which she did, but with teasing her a bit. And that left Jiro thinking. Sure, his mom and her mom are, well, accepting this relationship, but does he have the same feelings toward her, like she have for him? Then she started playing with his hair and that was able to wake Deku up, and when Deku saw her, he smiled. <sighs> Good morning, wildcat. Jiro still blushing, she nods. Let me guess, I passed out again? She nods again. Wait, so what happened exactly? Wait, you don't remember? He tell her it's a bit foggy, but I remember getting this feeling that I am way more powerful. Then I defeated Todoroki. And the lesson I remember is looking at you guys. Wait, are you guys okay? Are you okay? She calm him down. Yeah, we are alright, don't worry. And we almost remembered everything except for the part of you charging a keyblast and almost throwing it at Bakugo. I see the reply. And let me guess, you stopped me. Again. She nods. Then Deku asks her, why your face is red? Are you sick or something? She shook her head and started playing with her earphone jacks. Oh, someone is embarrassed, Deku tell her. How did you? She asked him. 
You're playing with your jacks. You always do that when you're embarrassed. So come on, spit it out. What's wrong? She looked at him, then she sighed. And she tell him what Mina told him about if they are a couple and if not, do they have feelings for each other? And after he heard the last sentence, Deku chuckled a bit. Jiro does the same but a bit down. <laughs> yeah, that will not happen. But before she can finish her sentence, Deku cut her off. Is it really that obvious? Jiro's eyes widen. What? Deku sigh. Look, I thought that only our parents can see that, but I guess not. What are you saying? She asked him in shock. A small blush form on Deku's face. Well, you see, Kyoka, I, I do have feelings for you for quite a while. I thought that I was good in hiding them, except for our parents, but I guess not. And I guess the cat is out of the bag. Jiro was shocked, then she asked him, why? Deku was confused. Why what? Why me? She replied. I'm sure that there is better options, like Oraka or Nijire, and they look way more girly than me. And when she said that, Deku understand what's going on, so he tell her. What do you mean why? Just look at yourself, Kyoka. You are the most amazing girl that I have ever met. Just being with you make me happy. And whenever I feel down, you always find a way to make me smile. Plus, not going to lie, you're a bit feisty, and I kind of dig that. And overall, it's just because it's you. Then he put his hand on her cheek. Look at me, Kyoka. She does, and they lock eyes. Don't listen to others, alright? You are beautiful. You always have been. And always will. And after she heard that, she hugged him. Deku hugged back. He was a bit hesitant, but he did it. Then Jiro looked at him and started getting closer. It's obvious she wanted to kiss him, but Deku pulled back. Jiro apologized. Sorry if I'm moving a bit too fast. I. It's not that Deku cut her off. I want to do it, it's just... It's just what? She asked him. Deku sighed in defeat. I'm afraid, Kyoka. I'm afraid. Jiro was surprised. Deku, Mirko's son? Afraid? Sure, he's still a kid, but... For him to say it out loud? So she tell him, afraid from what? What people might think of us? Deku shook his head. You know me better than that, Kyoka. I don't care what people think of me. I live in my own way, so I don't care what people think of me. But what I'm actually afraid is me. I'm afraid from myself. Or to be precise, what I can do. What do you mean? She asked him. Look, the corpulai, even though they didn't say it out loud, I can see it in their eyes. Our classmates, even some teachers, and even some pro heroes that I know, are afraid of me or my power to be precise and what it can do whenever I go berserk. I'm afraid of what will happen when I go berserk. I don't have any control. You and my mom are the only two people that weren't afraid of me. For my mom's case, it's obvious she's a number 5 hero, so she's strong and can stop me whenever I go berserk. But in your case, I... <laughs> I'm afraid what I can do to you. Even now, we are just friends and whenever I go berserk or try to hate someone when I'm berserk, you always step in and try to stop me. It did work twice, but I'm afraid if I completely lost control and I end up... <sighs> Deku did not want to say the last word. But Jiro understand. That's why I suppress my emotions as much as I can. Because if I hurt you or God knows, you know what? I cannot live with myself. And after he finished his speech, Jiro punched him in the head with a bit of force. Hey, what's that for? The car reply. You are an idiot, you know that? Even if you are not dating, I will stop you because we are friends and I know that you are a good guy and you will not hurt anyone. And I know how much it hurts you whenever you hurt someone when you go berserk. So if there is any chance that I can spare you that pain, I will do it. Deku chuckled. You are a hardhead, you know that? And a proud one, Jiro replied. Deku looked at her, then he had enough and pulled her into a kiss. She was surprised, but she kissed back. And after he broke the kiss, he told her, You don't know how long I waited to do this. And when she heard that, Jiro blush. Oh, someone is blushing. Ah, shout it, she tell him. Then she hugged him, and Deku hugged back. And after a few seconds, Jiro tell him, So this is Mekas. Well, do you want to? Deku asked her. She nods. Okay, so let's make it official. Kyoka, do you want to become my girlfriend? Jiro blush and tell him yes. Deku smile. I'm happy to hear that. But if you don't mind me asking, I know why you mentioned Oraka because she was trying to get a bit more closer to me. But why Nijire? Jiro looked down. Oh, about that. The first time I met her, she was friendly toward you, so it took me by surprise. 
So I thought, Deku chuckle, <laughs> it's not like that at all. She's just a friend, or technically I almost see her like a big sister to me. Jiro looked at him confused, so Deku explained, You see, I almost see Ryuko like an aunt to me. So sometimes I spend quite a lot of time in her agency, and because Nijiri is doing a work study with her, we ended up spending some time together. Plus, we have almost the same quirk, or in my case, one of my quirks. So we quickly become friends, and like I told you, she almost like a sister to me. So you don't have to worry about her at all, alright? Because trust me, she's always energetic and always cheerful, not just with me. Oh, okay, if you say so. And then they heard Prask Mike calling for Deku to get his medal. Well, I guess I have to go. Can you help me up? I'm a bit tired. Sure thing, she tell him. So she put her hand around his waist, and Deku put his hand around her shoulder. So they made their way toward the arena. So Jiro got the third place. All might congratulate her on doing a good job, and to be strong in her own right. Then he talked with Doroki, and Doroki tell him the same thing, that he need to face his past. And when Deku heard that, he started thinking, Facing your past, huh? I wish I can do that. Then All Might walk up to him and tell him, Young Izuku, you never ceased to amaze me ever since the USJ. But what is this new form of yours? Deku tell him, I don't know actually. I just, I felt that I was going to transform, but, but after hearing Kyoka's voice, I was able to fight the transformation, and I end up unlocking that. It was powerful indeed. I need to train harder to master it. Then Deku looked at Jiro, she looked at him, and they smile to make my dream a reality and protect what I care about. Then All Might looked at them and he whispered, Oh, I see what's going on. That's good to hear, young Izuku. Here is your first place. After that, everyone starts walking out of the stadium, and Jiro and Deku are side by side. Jiro is blushing a bit, then she hit Deku's hand slightly. Deku looked at her, smile, and he hold her hand. Then from afar, they saw Miracle. They approach her, then they greet her. She congratulates them on... Deku winning and Jiro getting the third place. Plus, she's happy that Deku is able to get some control over his quirk. Uh, thanks, mom, but I still have a long way to go. Then she put her hand on his shoulder, and I will always be there. Deku smile. Thanks. You too, Jiro. I'm impressed. You are able to beat a speed type quirk. Jiro chuckled. Well, Miss Miracle, you are faster than him, even with you holding back. So, <laughs> Miracle chuckled. I know that. Then she saw something. She smiled, then she told her, and by the way, didn't I tell you to drop the Miss Miracle? It's roomy for you, plus, I think you have to after this, she pointed at their hands. So I guess you two are, Deku nod, Jiro blush and also nod. It's about time, she replied, you two almost drove me nuts on how long you waited. Yeah, yeah, I know, Deku reply, well, better late than ever, Deku reply, eh, I guess you're right. Well, I think it would be better if we go home. I think you need your rest after that. You're right about that, I'm exhausted. That form is powerful, but it's consumed quite a lot of my power. So they made their way toward their house, houses I mean, and they drop Jiro home. And of course Miriko cannot help it and she tells Jiro's parents about them dating. Jiro's dad was happy, but her mom tell the same thing as Miriko, it's about time. So they talk for a bit, Deku just sighed. They're a pain, I know. Anyway, Wildcat? Since Aizawa gave us two days to rest, do you want to go out tomorrow? Jiro blush. Like a date? Deku smile. Of course it's a date. So you're free? She nods. Well, it's settled then. See you tomorrow? She nods and Deku and Miracle made their way toward our house. When they arrived, Deku was going to make something to eat. But Miracle stopped him. Okay, stop it right there, my little monkey. You need your rest. I will just order something to eat. For both of us. Deku is just too tired, so he agreed. So fast forward the next day, and Deku is going out to pick up Jiro. So when he arrived and saw Jiro, he blushed a bit. Even though she was against it a bit, her mom helped her get ready. So they went on their date. And in the way back, and before they arrive at Jiro's house, Deku stopped, and Jiro does the same. She asked him if something wrong. He shook his head. No, the day was actually pretty fun. It's just that I want you to promise me something, Kyoka. Shoot, what do you need? I don't know when or if my memories will come back, but if they do, and judging by how I act, by just a small amount of them, when they come back, I will lose control completely. So I want you to promise me to stay away from me. But, Kyoka, please, promise me that. I don't want to hurt you, and I cannot afford to lose you. So please, this is the only thing that I'm going to ask you to do. If I lose control, stay away from me. Please. Alright, you got it, Greeny. 
I will stay away from you if your memories come back. Then she smirked. But with this, you are going to owe me something. Deku sighed. What do you need? Hmm, I don't know yet. But if something comes to mind, I will tell you. I'm going to regret this, aren't I? Jiro smirked. Definitely. Then Deku smirked, grabbed her by her chin and kissed her. Jiro blushed. And after they broke the kiss, Deku tell her, Oh, where is your uh, cocky attitude just now? Jiro panted a bit. Shut it. Deku just giggled. So he took her home. Jiro's parents offered him to stay for dinner. He was going to decline, but at that very second, his mom called him and told him that she would be late. Deku tell her to stay safe, and he just had dinner with them. And when he went back home, of course, he cooked something for his mom. Then he fell asleep. And the next day... While he's training a bit, he took a break and started watching TV. Then he saw the news about Ingenium. His jaw dropped. He called Ida to check up on him. Ida tell him that he's fine, but Deku can sense the malice in his voice. He's angry and sad at the same time. Deku tell him to take care of yourself and don't do anything rash. Ida tell him that he won't and he hang up. Then Jiro called him and asked him if he saw the news. Deku nod and they talk for a bit. Even though Deku is not that close with Ida like the anime, they are decent friends, so he tells Jiro that we have to be there for him. He somewhat know that pain. She agreed and fast forward the next day. Ava is waiting on their seat, with Jiro sitting with Deku, and then get the attention of Mina. So she smirked and walked up to them and asked Jiro. Or tease her a bit. You two are awfully close today, so what's going on? Jiro blushed and started getting embarrassed. Deku on the other hand smirk. He hugged Jiro from the back and tell her, well, she's my wildcat now. Jiro's face turned completely red, but Mina is happy, shocked, maybe a mix of both. Wait, so that mean, yes, Mina, we are together, like a couple together. She was happy for them, but she asked them since when. Right before the metal ceremony, I asked her out. And she said yes. Well, I'm happy for you too. And everyone else congratulated them, except for Ida and Oraka. Oraka start accepting the feat that she will not win him. And Ida is busy with you know what. And Deku catch on on that. So Aizawa enter the classroom and tell everybody to sit down. Then he show how many accommodation everyone got. Of course Deku was first place, then Todoroki, then Ida, then Jiro. And Boku did not get that many compared to Deku and Todoroki because he didn't fight in the finals. So some pros saw that he doesn't have a lot of potential. Sure he have a powerful quirk but that's it. But don't worry, he will still do his work study with best genius. <coughs> because, <laughs> not going to lie, Bakugo with the normal hair is funny. So while everyone is discussing which agency they should go to, Deku only is focusing on Ida. He saw him quickly fill his paper and hand it over. Deku took a peek and he told to himself, thought so. And after that, Deku quickly fill his paper and hand it over. And he walked back to Jiro. She asked him if he already picked one. He nods. But before she can ask him which one, Deku asked her if she picked one. She tell him that she did get some, but most of them will not work with her quirk. Can I take a look? Sure, go ahead. So he took a look and yes, some of them are just too weak or she will not learn anything from them because remember, she trained with Miracle. Of course, Miracle would have been happy to give them an internship with her, but here's the thing, she doesn't have an agency, so she cannot recruit anyone. So Deku tell her to just go with that arms, because with him she can use her quirk. She nods and thinking for the advice, then Mina approached them and asked them how's the dating life. Mina, we only started dating two days ago, but so far I kind of like it. Don't you agree, Wildcat? Jiro blushed slightly and agreed with him. Oh, now you mention it, Mina tell him. I was going to ask you about this, but I was cut off with study and sport festival and USJ, you know. So, what's up with the nickname? Why Wildcat? Then Jiro joined and tell him, yeah, I don't know why either, so can you explain? Well, the core reply, the wild part is simple. She's feisty. And if you mess with her, you will be at the mercy of her earphone jacks. Jiro blushed, slightly annoyed. Mina only chuckled. Yeah, true that. And why cat? Oh, that's simple, the core reply. Cats are cute. Jiro's face turned completely red. Mina makes a high-pitched noise. Same for the rest of girls, except Oraka. She just realized that she didn't have a chance from the beginning. So she congratulated them. And after they're done, I told them they have to pick hero names. Everyone still have the same name and when it's time for Deku, he picked an interesting name, Berserk. So they asked him why. Deku sighed and he gets serious and that get the attention of everyone. Look, guys, I'm going straight to the point. Ever since the USJ, or to be precise, ever since I use my form or the monkey form, everyone here except for one are afraid of me. Am I right? 
Avon looked down while well, except for Jiro, they tried to apologize but Deku cut them off. It's okay guys, I understand. Not going to lie, I'm also a bit afraid. That's why I choose this name, Berserk. Because it will always remind me of what will happen if my quirk took control. Avon can go behind his reason, then Deku smile a bit and tell them, well there is also another reason. Someone special to me gave me that nickname, so I'm keeping it. Then he gave a wink to Jiro. Jiro just blushed and hide her face. Avon teased her a bit except for Ida. He's serious and only Deku noticed that. So with that fast forward to the next day because they have to split and go to their agencies. And to the shock of Ida, Deku is going with him. Before he go Deku asks him is he really okay? Ida nod, but Deku can see it in his eyes. He's angry. So before that part ways, Deku tell Jiro to stay safe and she tell him to do the same. She gave him a quick kiss then she went on her way. So Deku went with Ida in the way he tries to talk to him but Ida is just too quiet. And when they arrive at the agency, they show them around. Then they go on patrol and they explain what to do. And nothing actually happened for the next couple of days. Of course Deku did keep up with his training and he tried to access that power again but he's not able to yet. Then in the third night while in patrol, they heard a loud boom so they rushed there and saw three Numus and most of the heroes cannot do anything against them. Deku on the other hand he's able to help a bit, he's able to hold off the flying Numu but he need to be careful, it's a full moon tonight. Then Deku saw Ida is nowhere to be seen. Damn it Ida, he already left? He got slightly enraged and that gave him a slight boost so he punched the flying Numu in the face and fired a key blast after it, knocking him down toward the ground, stunning him. Then Deku start flying away where is no one around because he remembered that stain only attack away from people and in deserted alleyways. And because he can fly and he's having a boost in power, he's able to catch on to Ida pretty quick. And when he arrived he saw Ida on the ground, but stain is a bit far away from him. But when he start walking toward him, Deku fly at top speed and kick him in the face. Sending him flying but he was able to land back on his feet. Then stain look at him. <sighs> Another kid? Then Ida saw him. What are you doing here? Stay away. This is my fight. Deku got enraged. If this is your fight, then get up and fight. What the hell were you thinking coming here alone? He was able to badly hurt your brother. What do you think you will be able to do? I... Then Deku cut him off. Shut up plus, even if you can move, I will still join the fight because heroes save lives. And after he said that, Stain smirk and tell him, you are a real one, kid. So step aside and let me kill this fake. Fake? The reply. Why is he fake? He was here to kill me, not to save him. He's a fake, so he deserves to die. He come here only for revenge. Heroes don't do that. Ida was going to comment, but Deku beat him to the punch. Who decided that? Heroes are still human. We still have our emotions. We have the right to hate, to love, or go for revenge. But I agree with you. If he want to become a hero, he need to put people first before his emotions. He's still learning. He's not a fake. And without wasting a beat, Deku fired a key blast at Stain. He was forced to dodge and Deku took this opportunity to charge at him and throws a kick. Stain was able to dodge it. He tried to slash Deku, but Deku was able to avoid it. And they go back and forth a bit. Then a wave of flame comes straight towards Stain and he was able to dodge it. Deku look back and saw Todoroki. What are you doing here? Deku asked him. I guess to help you. I saw you earlier flying away so I just followed you. It was a bit hard but I was able to catch up. Then he saw the pro and Ida on the ground. Then they could land beside him. Then Todoroki tell him what's going on here. I will explain later. First we have to defeat him. You know that's the hero killer, right? Yeah, I know. Don't trap your guard. Help me from distance and I can do the hand to hand combat. Todoroki nod and Deku charge at Stain and they have almost the same battle as the anime except this Deku know how to fight. So Stain is pushed back more than before and he's actually getting a bit serious. He always try to go after Ida but Todoroki block it or Deku is just holding him in his place. Ida start whining and tell them this is his fight, he need to get revenge. Todoroki was going to shout at him but Deku beat him to it. Then get up and fight! If this is your fight, your revenge, get up and take it. Don't let other people do it for you. Because I surely would not let anyone get between me and my revenge. And that shocked everyone. Deku? Revenge? What is he talking about? And Stain looked at him and tell him, Your eyes are the same as him. You are going for revenge on someone. There is still hope for you kid. Don't go after revenge and focus on being a hero. Because if you don't, you cannot become one. Deku got enraged. Shut up! 
The quill at the top of his lungs and his aura burst open, but this time is different. It's green. Then he charged a stain with blinding speed, and that took stain off guard, and Deku was able to deliver a fierce right hook to his face, following it with a kick to his ribcage, and he ended with a powerful mouth beam that sent him crashing toward the wall. And even though Avon is shocked, Todoroki was able to snap out of it, and he frees stain in his place. Then Deku fly down and his aura disappear, but he's still angry. Ida slowly get up, same goes for the hero. They tie up Stain, and they took away his weapons. Everyone, even the hidden knife, because Mirko did tell Deku to watch out about hidden weapons. So they encounter some heroes, and while they're waiting for the cops and paramedic, Ida approached Deku and Todoroki, and he bows. He apologized for what he did. I was blinded by rage, and I completely forgot what's important saving lives and if it wasn't for you i will be dead so thanks and i'm sorry i'm sorry for going for revenge deku sighed and tell him you're forgiven but you don't have to apologize for going for revenge because if i was in your shoes i would have done the same ida and todoroki looked at deku in shock but before they can say anything a flying numu come flying past them and he picked deku up but before he can fly away remember deku is still a bit angry so he fired a powerful and full power Eraser cannon at Numu's face, doing quite a lot of damage. So the Numu dropped to the ground almost dead and Deku slowly fly toward the ground. And Avon just looked at him in shock, especially Ida and Todoroki. Deku want revenge? On who? They asked themselves and I'm going to stop it right here. So what do you think of it guys? What will Ida and Todoroki do with this information? Will Deku tell them about his past? What will happen? Leave your thoughts and comments down below and if you enjoyed the video drop a like and like I told you in the beginning of this video 500 likes and I'll make another part of this series and if you're new subscribe there is more videos like this coming and like always guys peace